What's up you guys, it's your girl Fire here and in today's video I am starting a new segment called Her Story. It's a play on words from history where I do my makeup and tell history. I wanted to start off the segment very strong so we are starting off with Queen Lilio Kalani. Okay, so if you are interested in this, then stay to the end of the video. Um, this is just going to be talking about her life and her reign as queen. So if you are interested, then let's get to this video. Now, she was born Lydia Kamakaeha, September 1838. She was the daughter of an advisor to King Kamehameha V. So she was already in that inner circle. She was already part of the girls. She knew how to act around the white man. She was accustomed to that lifestyle. So she had a lot of access to a lot of things that, you know, the commoners, or the, the regular people, they didn't have access to. So she was taught by missionaries, reading, writing, arithmetic. Um, she also got taught religion. So Christianity, yeah, she, she loved her some some Jesus. She also <laughs> had access to a boat that took her to the other side of the world wherever she wanted to go in the Western world. So she took tours. Um, I'm guessing she went to Massachusetts and Connecticut because those were the first, you know, settling parts of the U.S. And I'm, you know, in my mind of minds, I really wonder if she's seen slaves. What does she think? I know like she docked in and seen some slaves being auctioned. Like that's that's interesting. I need to read I need to read more. More on that maybe later. I don't know. It also says in her memoir that she was a very studious girl. She was somebody that really loved books. She had a passion for schoolwork. She sat in the you know front row of all her classes, all her missionary classes. Along with being a girl that loves being in the books she also was a very skilled musician and composer she wrote the most iconic hawaii song ever aloha oi okay everybody's heard it especially if you've seen lilo and stitch that one scene where nani sings it to lilo that's lilio kalani wrote that so being as though lilio kalani and young lydia was this type of girl she was like the good girl she felt like she wasn't much of a catch like her sister bernice because bernice got married at 18. now don't be alarmed because back in the 17 18 maybe hell even some of the 1900s arranged marriages and um young marriages were a thing okay nobody dated nobody had situationships and entanglements no it's like i marry you and then we get to know each other that was just how it was and even more so native hawaiians used to marry their brothers or sisters yeah until the missionaries came in and was like yeah y'all can't do that <laughs> that's a sin fast forward Lydia is a little older and she finds out that she really is that because she has a bunch of suitors that want to marry her. One of them being Alexander Liho Liho. Alexander, he was he was a catch. He was a nice young fella or whatever. He asked her to marry her. And um, she was like, you know, let me see what we can do. They was writing each other back and forth, back and forth when she went afar, you know, she went somewhere else for a little minute. And um, it, it comes, you know, out of the woodwork through the grapevine that Alexander is actually getting married to his cousin, Victoria. She attended the wedding and found the suitor that she actually really was interested in. In her book, she said he was an interesting man and his name was John <gasps> O. Dominus. Dominus was a white man. Later on down the line, she married this interesting John Dominus and he later became the governor of Oahu and Maui. I don't think simultaneously at the same time, but he was the governor of Oahu and Maui. Moving on from Lydia's adolescent stages, at this point she is married and we are gonna take a look at her reign as queen. If you ask me, I feel like this position kinda just fell into her lap because after her brother King David Kalakaua died, 
the next heir to the throne was the little brother, but the little brother had died before David, so everybody was just like, hey, Lydia, let's see what you got. And she took on that role, put on her crown, and was like, I run it. And <laughs> I commend her for that. But it wasn't easy, and I feel like it was very short-lived. A lot of white politicians did not like that she was running it, okay? She was running her own nation that wasn't theirs, okay? He, they didn't like that because in America, the women's role was to sit there, brush your hair, sip your tea, in cahoots with the other wives and just shut up, be seen, bear my children, but not be heard. Along with this queen role, Queen Lilio Kalani had to take on the mishaps of the previous reign of her brother, okay? She had to undo things that her brother did. Kind of sort of like what Donald Trump is doing to Obama or what has done to Obama. Um, she had to do with her brother, King David. Now, I honestly feel like King David was opportunist and he wanted to develop Hawaii. So he was very um, buddy buddy with the Americans or tried to be very pleasing to the Americans and stuff like that. So he signed, you know, deals to the devil. And one of them that is very significant to the story is the Reciprocity Treaty of 1875. It pretty much gave the US exclusive rights to come in and out of Hawaii as they please. What was in the fine lines too is that they could build Pearl Harbor. Um, and Queen Iliokalani did not like that. She was like, no, you're not about to do that. I'm trying to preserve my land, my people. What's in it for my people? This is just absurd. We're not, we're not, no, you're not expanding here. And the white people didn't like that. In 1893, Sanford Dole, he was a part of the missionary party and supposed to be a friend of Lily Okalani because, you know, then again, you know, white people and Hawaiians were all getting along and friends, some of them. Um, not all of them had a motive. When he asked the queen, the queen said, hell no, hell to the no, or don't you understand the N or the O, like no, because no, no, no. You know what I mean? She was not having it. I think he could have done more um, to help preserve the monarchy, but he didn't. And he kind of just let it happen. And because she said no, the Americans had locked her up, charged her with treason, and placed her under house arrest in the Iolani Palace that was her resident's home. Like, in my mind, I would never understand that. Like, how, how you lock me up on my land in my home and you don't even go here you're nobody like how you how you citizens arrest me that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't make sense you're not even what you know what i'm saying um i would never get that but hey it's america but anyways um she got locked up and then was forced to sign the form to abdication while she was in confinement she found herself writing memoirs, music, and she sewn quilts. Fast forward, after Hawaii's annexed, she's now in remembrance of the monarchy and she's just trying to, you know, digest that the old Hawaii is gone, this is the new Hawaii, we are now part of the U.S., so we are a territory of the U.S. And, um... That's just what it is. In 1917, November 1917, Miss Lydia is now 79 years old. I couldn't find how she exactly died, but it said that she died from deteriorating health and um, diminished mental capacity. And I think that's Alzheimer's. She died from Alzheimer's. If you have not learned anything from this, take away that she was a very strong, proud queen. Okay, very strong, proud queen. Her legacy lives on. Um, and she was the first and last queen of the Hawaiian monarchy. 
that is all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much um, for watching this. I am going to be doing more of these videos, so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one.